Hi guys, I'm Jenna from Folk Rock Farm and uh, today I'm going to teach you about how to start a homestead. Um, now this is going to be more of a podcasty type video so feel free to put me in your headphones, carry on your day while you listen to me chat, grab your cup of coffee, do the dishes. Um, you don't necessarily just need to be looking at my face. Um, but anyways, let's dive right in. So a little background on myself. My husband Rory and I have been living at our current homestead for two and a half years. It's a 3.5 acre homestead and we've had a lot of success with it so far. I would say last summer 80% of our meals were generated from our garden. Um, just the amount of annuals we had coming in. So I want to share with you guys what you can do to get prepared or to start your homesteading dream like us. So, to begin, I feel like there's four main components when you are thinking about starting a homestead. And the first one would be patience, because everything takes time. Money, everything costs money, but don't let that get you down if you feel like you can't afford. There are different ways to make homesteading affordable. Um, knowledge, you're going to have to know how to do it. And last, but probably most importantly you have to want to do it and what I mean by that is you can want a homestead you can dream about a homestead you can watch videos and be like I want to do that but at the end of the day you have to want to do the homesteading um, so my husband Rory and I we've been working at a farm for going on eight years now and the past seven years I've been doing the hiring for the field workers and I can't tell you how many folks come in and they're like, I want to do this. I want to farm. I want to eat better. I want to be more sustainable. And that's great. So I hire them. They sound like the perfect candidate. And maybe a week into the job, maybe a day into the job, after spending hours out in the sun or the rain, uh, bent over harvesting, weeding, they realize that they don't want to do this. And so it's nice to have that idea of farming, like going out to the fields and being surrounded by colorful butterflies and going and picking blueberries all day, you know? Like there's this kind of idea what people think farming or homesteading is. And while yes, that's a very great and major component of it, what some of those people don't realize is all the steps that came prior to harvesting that blueberry. That blueberry bush had to be planted, it had to be weeded, it had to have been pruned, it had to be protected from insects and birds, and you really don't get blueberries until like a few years later after you plant your blueberry bush. So. Having this knowledge, some people are like, oh no, that's, that's way too much. I can't do that much to get some blueberries. But then you have people like me that's like, that's amazing. I want to put in all that work so that the blueberry is that much more gratifying when you go to pick it and eat it. You know, you remember all those years of work put into this. So the bottom line I'm getting at is that you have to want to do it. But if you want to do it, then great, you're in the right place. So. You have your want. Now, let's really dive into that. And what do you personally want from your homestead? What does your homestead look like to you? Um, are you doing this because you're recently vegan or vegetarian and you want access to the most nutrient dense food possible? Um, are you doing this for food security? You know, have you seen grocery store shelves empty and this is making you nervous? Um, are you doing it? for the environment, you want to be more sustainable. There could be a whole host of reasons why you want to homestead, but you know, grab a coffee, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and actually write them down. And doing so is going to help you narrow down your wants and your needs and figure out the type of homestead that's right for you because a homestead isn't created equally. There's so many different styles of homesteads. Um, for example, I got into growing my own food because I was having a lot of health issues and mostly just from eating poorly. 
I would get stomach issues, back issues, uh, I'd go to emergency rooms, I'd go to doctors, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Um, and eating better helped. And now it's not to say that it can be a cure-all for everything, but in general, eating better is going to help you feel better. Like that's just, everyone knows that. And so that got me gravitated towards fresh food, which got me gravitating towards farms. And once I started doing it, I fell in love with it and I knew that I wanted to grow my own food. So figure out why you want a homestead and take this why to formulate a solid list of the things you want to get from your homestead. And this why list is going to bring you to your needs list. And your needs are going to bring you to the type of homestead that you want to create. Homesteading can look very different for different people. You can grow your own food on a quarter acre, one acre, ten acres, anywhere in between, anywhere above. I mean, you can even grow your own microgreens on your windowsill. There's so many different ways to grow your own food. So for example, if you definitely want animals, you're definitely going to need some space. That being said, chickens don't necessarily take up a lot of room. So chickens would probably be fine on like a quarter acre. But now if you're thinking like goats or pigs or cows, they're going to require some acreage. And again, you can keep a goat in just a little barn and just feed it hay. But ideally, if you're trying to homestead, you're trying to be more self-sustainable, which means not relying on an outside source to feed your goat. So that's going to mean you're going to want some grass for your goat to eat, and then you're going to want to rotate it so that there's less chance of worms and pests for your goat. So there's a lot that goes into it. But basically, if you want animals, you're going to need a bigger homestead than, say, if you just want to grow, like, lettuce greens. So figuring out what you want out of your homestead is going to help you figure out how big of a homestead you actually need. That's going to help you with your money troubles and what you can afford and so on and so forth. And again, if you want fruit trees or fruiting shrubs, they're going to take up a little bit of room also. And they take up more permanent room because they're perennials. They stay in the same spot year after year. If you're thinking of just doing annual gardens, then you have a lot more options. You can try out different things every year because you replace it every year. So you would need less space if you were just doing annual gardens. The type of homestead that you want to create is going to depend greatly on the things that you really want or you really need from your homestead. When Rory and I were first looking for land, we wanted at least 10 acres and a home and maybe a little forest maybe a little pond to fulfill all of our wants, our, our needs that we thought at the time. However, we live in New England where land isn't always available and it for certain is not cheap. And after just starting to look for property, immediately our needs came down to five acres because 10 acres was way out of our budget. And then after a year, of looking for a property, our needs then became one acre because of how expensive the market is. And we also wanted a house that didn't require a ton of work, like we were willing to put in some TLC, but we also wanted it to be livable. So quickly we realized that the needs we thought we needed were more of a dreamland and yes, if we could have 40 acres and be near our families and be in the community we want and it was for the same price of our three and a half acre plot of land we definitely would have gone for it but you have to be realistic your needs are going to become more realistic once you start defining them and once you actually see what's available that could have a lot of different outcomes you know maybe you're able to relocate maybe you're able to uh, minimize the amount of land you need right away. Um, you can always lease. You can lease later. You can buy something smaller now. You could do that for now and then move on. Or honestly, you can start in the backyard you have now. You can start on your windowsill. There's a lot of different ways of going about doing this, but 
What that all comes down to is my first topic, which is the patience. And you definitely need patience when it comes to homesteading. So that first step, even just finding your homestead, is going to take time. Um, whether you're looking for the right piece of land, one that fulfills your needs, just waiting for them to become available, it's all going to take time. And then, even after you find your homestead, it's still going to take time to build it. You're going to need patience when it comes to the garden, to the orchard, to the animals. For example, like I said, a blueberry bush is going to take a couple years to really start fruiting. That goes with most fruiting shrubs and trees. Trees will even take longer. Um, even an annual garden, you know, you'll start it in spring. A lot of produce you don't even start to get a return from until summer. So you definitely have to have a great deal of patience. And when it comes to animals, if you're looking to have babies or milk, those things gonna, are going to take time, months. If you have patience, the reward is that much greater getting through that time. And I have grown to really appreciate all the steps leading up to the reward. So patience is key to finding a homestead, starting a homestead, and living a homestead. Because you're never done when you're homesteading. It's never like you're going to eventually reach this point and be like, oh, I'm a homesteader now. No. <laughs> it's just, it's gonna keep on going. And for someone like me, that's perfect. I, I get bored easily. I like having something to always do and something to always look forward to. Also alongside finding a homestead, money. So this is obviously something you're going to need to start a homestead unless you're funded somehow, unless you just get money somehow. If you're here on YouTube looking up how to start a homestead, chances are you're probably going to fund it yourself. Again, this is where patience comes in handy because it's going to take time to afford a homestead. You're going to have to save money. Um, again, this is where your wants come in. Write down more lists if you have to. How to save in order, how to save money. You know, write down things that like you, you need. You know, your food, your electric bill, all these things you need to spend money on. And then maybe make a list of the things that you don't necessarily have to spend money on. And, for example, when we were trying to save money for a homestead, we wouldn't go out to eat as often. We wouldn't be buying all these materialistic things that didn't really matter too much to us. We didn't need the latest iPhone or the latest gadget. We were happy living a bit frugally. Is that even a word, frugally? If it, frugal? If it meant that, you know, later on we could afford the homestead of our dreams. So again, that situation is going to be different for everybody. But just take a look at your savings and your budgets and what you spend money on and just become realistic about it. Like, how much would it, how long would it take to save up money if you got rid of X, Y, and Z? So, I'm not a financial planner, but I just know from experience that if you really want to do this, then you will want to set aside some money for it. Has anyone needed to refill their coffee? Because I know I have. So while you're experiencing this time without a homestead and you've been patient um, and you want it and I cannot stress enough how big of an opportunity this is for you to start collecting your knowledge. And there is no better time to learn how to homestead than before you have a homestead. Now that being said you will learn a lot as you go but Molding yourself into a homesteader even before you have a piece of land to put a seed into will be so beneficial to you and I cannot stress this enough. So if you're in this area where you want a homestead but you can't afford it or the right piece of property hasn't come up yet, just know you are in like the golden seat right now. Like take this time and really hone your skills. I wish I did. For example, we've been homesteading for about two and a half years now, like I said, and I still don't know how to can properly. 
I still don't know how to blanch vegetables. I'm just learning fermenting because I just didn't take the time to do this before and now I'm kicking myself being like, why didn't I take the time to do this before? And yeah, like I like to learn as I go. I'm that kind of person. Like I'll, I'll sit down and I'll read a book, but like usually it takes some effort for my part. Like I'll start reading and then my eyes will go this way and my mind will go another way and it's tough. Like I'm definitely not huge into it, but if you want to do this, just set some time and find a topic that really inspires you and a writer who's really good at inspiring you. Like, a writer can make or break a garden book. So if you pick up one homesteading or garden book and you're just like, uh, just like so much facts and numbers and all these different piles of information that you can't digest because they just lay it on you so thick, try another author, honestly, because there'll be better authors and better books where like it'll grip you more it'll be easier to understand they'll break it down in a way that makes more sense to you you know go to youtube like find different how to's on youtube to start doing it and really think about all the tools that will be useful in your toolkit when you actually own your homestead and there's so many resources you can go to your state's Department of Agriculture website. They'll have different resources where there's articles you can read, there's meetings you can go to, there's classes you can take, there's farms who need help, they need workers, they need volunteers. And if I were to tell you one thing to do to start a homestead, it would be start working for someone else, whether it's a friend you help or volunteer for, whether it's uh, actual farm, go apply and or go volunteer and just get that hands-on experience because in my case and what I believe, I feel like that's the best way to learn is just to get your hands into it and if you work or volunteer on a farm you are going to learn something. You are going to learn some aspect of homesteading that you did not know before and it's going to really open your eyes to like just the amount of work that goes into growing any single crop. So again, use this time to create your toolkit, whether that's reading, YouTube, resources, make friends with a farmer, volunteer on a farm, or just start however you can, whatever that looks like for you. A sunny windowsill is a great way to start microgreens or even seed starting. Pots. If you all you have is a driveway, grow in pots. Like it's there's so many opportunities to learn how to grow just even in your own little apartment or whatever it might be. Another thing I would recommend is just going to farmers markets. If you haven't yet had the opportunity to explore different types of produce or to taste them, now is a great opportunity to go to farmers markets or to farmers and start trying out new pro produce you haven't before. Before I started working on a farm, I didn't know that tomatoes came in any other color besides red. And I didn't like tomatoes. And then I won't forget the first tomato I ever had directly from the plant was a sun gold cherry tomato and it just turned my world around. And now I love tomatoes. I still won't buy tomatoes in the winter off a grocery store shelf, but I will grow them every single year in my garden I love them so it's a great opportunity to now also figure out like what you want to grow because once you get your parcel of land whatever that might look like to you it's going to be so overwhelming to decide what to grow and how to grow it to know which fruits and vegetables you already like and are really interested in growing is going to really help you put and put you in the right direction so once you've honed in on all those skills and you're ready to start looking for a homestead, again, patience, money, knowledge, and want are all going to play a big role here. There's several resources online. There's like landwatch.com, newenglandfarmlandfinder.com, I think it's called. We were able to find our homestead on a realtor website. I think it was like Redfin. Um, because like I said, we also wanted a home, um, but there's so many different opportunities out there and like I said, it's going to look different for everybody. What I would recommend is to start small. You can always expand later, whether that's 
you know, selling your, your property then and going on to somewhere else, or um, just leasing land down the line where you can afford it more. So just start small, really hone in on what you need from your homestead, why you want it, and just be really patient. That's what I can't say enough is it's going to take time, but trust me, it's going to be so worth it. And use this time wisely. Like I said, hone in your skills. Like, research how to do all these things. Work on a farm. Like, just make friends with somebody who has a homestead and go help them out. Like, there's just endless opportunity to use this time wisely. And then once you actually have your homestead, it's going to help you so much. Because once you have your homestead, time is like <laughs> your enemy number one because it seems like you don't have time to do anything anymore. So just trying to learn how to grow and everything once you have your homestead, it's going to be a lot of more work than just doing the homesteading. Um, that being said, this is going to be the uh, first part of my series on how to become a homesteader. So this is just a basic overview on the very starting processes of owning and just getting into homesteading. Um, later on I'll put up more videos on how to start a garden, how to start an orchard, how to raise chickens, everything else that we're doing here. But um, thank you guys for listening to me rant today. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. I'm hoping to do a lot more of these. And yeah, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer any questions I didn't answer here. Thank you guys and happy homesteading here from Folk Rock Farm.